so saw Paul pretty much got to the place where he was like, listen, now I'm so far into this new identity. All that other stuff, all that education, all the popularity, all the music awards, all the bit of all the parties I threw, all the people who ruined my name, all the trophies I won playing football, basketball don't mean absolutely nothing because I found my new identity. That's how you know that your new identity, you have been sanctified when you come. Mm -hmm. of you here at the Field Station Church. We are so blessed and honored that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. We are here in the city of Buffalo, New York, um, and we are just super excited because we have been in a series entitled Sanctified in the Kingdom, and we have been talking about identity, and today we're going to be going to episode 10. So I'm excited. If you haven't had a, a chance to like and subscribe to our channel, we do ask you to do so at this time. So guys, let's go to the book of Acts, um, Acts chapter 9. We're going to talk about Paul today. Y'all know Paul, the Apostle Paul. Um, the thing I love about Paul is Paul, there's a little bit of Saul in all of us. But I just kind of want to uh, share with us that in the last few weeks, we've been talking about how God wants to sanctify our identity. Who in here feels like your identity is being sanctified? Good. Yeah, I'm definitely mine. So every person God used, you were someone but then he's going to sanctify you and you're going to become someone else for his glory. It's going to be like that. Now, the thing is, who is this person he's making you into? Um, sometimes when you are in your old identity, you cannot fathom that this person <laughs> that God is sanctifying is the same individual because the work you're doing over here. And it's funny because a lot of the gifts and talents that you probably used over here, he can probably still use it over here. But uh, a lot of times when he does use you over here, it is going to be something over here that's going to make you say, are you talking about me? Can I really do that? Somebody tell me why you're going to feel that over here. Because you're going to have to be dependent to do what he called you to do over here. Because if you just if you just take what you did over here and come over here and just and just switch it for the Lord, which you could. You may trust in your own ability because you already been doing it. Does that make sense? But over here, there's going to be something that's going to make you pray. <laughs> something that's going to make you say, Lord, you sure I can do this? You will see it all through scripture. All through the Bible, you will see people who were focused on doing one thing. They were walking this way and God calls them Abraham, Abraham, Moses, whatever. And then they have to. Huh? And then God says, Go do this, 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 this. And you're going to notice all through the Bible, most of them didn't say, okay, wow, ooh, that's great. <laughs> Mostly every last one of them, the first thing they do is start saying, um, God, I, I have a stuttering problem. I, I, I can't speak. They start talking like, because the thing God is telling them to do, he's telling Moses to speak and the man stutter. Isn't that crazy? Why would he call a person who have a stuttering problem in his old identity? Ah, because there's going to be a lot of glory that's going to come out of this person with his new identity. You see? So he does take some of our strengths from over here. I noticed that he will take things that some some things that you picked up from your old identity. He can use that over here. He can use that zeal, that personality. He can he just shifts those things and give you an assignment over here and says, OK, now take that zeal, that personality and use it to build my kingdom over here. And that's what we're going to see to happen to, to, to Saul. So let's go to Acts chapter nine. And today, again, we're in episode 10 of the identity. Um, so I'm going to read uh, verse one. It says, and saw yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest. So let's stop right there. Verse one says, saw this is the old identity. He look at his mission statement. He was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against who? <laughs> the man was killing Christians. That was his old identity. And he was comfortable doing it. He actually felt called to kill people. 
he was feeling like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> to the point that he went in verse two to get letters to go to other places to kill him. Because he's like, I know this is my assignment. You know, every, if we're living in a world today that everybody want to know their purpose. And that is a good thing because your new identity is connected to the purpose you're seeking. This man is over here killing believers, thinking he's doing God justice, thinking he's helping God out. But that's Saul. Now, I'm going to bring you down because I'm, I'm doing this for time's sake. Let's go down now to verse um, 13. It says, then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many of this man. I've heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to the saints at Jerusalem. Verse 14. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Verse 15. Listen what the God, listen to what the Lord says. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way for he is a chosen <laughs> vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So God says, listen, Ananias, who was one of the apostles, when God told Ananias to go pray for Saul, because I, I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of um, giving you an opportunity to read Acts 9 on your, on your own, because in the Acts chapter 9, Saul on his way to Damascus sees Jesus and Jesus blinds him off his beast and the man falls off his beast and he's blind for three days. I'm just kind of rushing the story for you. The man had to be carried by other men because he couldn't see no more. But look at God stopped him on the way to do his last identity assignment. Did God stop anybody here on your way? <laughs> you was on your way to do an assignment from the old from Pookie. You was about to do a Pookie assignment. <laughs> and the Lord stopped you. Because the Lord said, mm -mm. So my pookie assignment was when I threw that birthday party when I was 17. I don't know. Were you there when I did that party? Yeah. So that birthday party I did at 17 years old where I almost got killed. That was my old identity. And I'm trying to, you know, provide an atmosphere for people to enjoy and 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 just live it up, live it out. Dance to all kind of music that wasn't glorified God. But that night, God got my attention. I had my Damascus road that night when people started fighting and, and, and then people were looking for me. I, that's when my, my, my saw a day changed then in 1991, <laughs> November 91. And I'm like, okay. And I said something. I remember I said something in the back of the house. When everybody was on the front of Shirley Street, when the police was coming and everybody was going crazy and, and all this stuff and people were crying and because and then and then our cousin's boyfriend was bleeding to death, almost bleeding to death because they the guys jumped them so bad. It, it, I, and all that responsibility fell on me because I had I was I felt called in my old identity to to do this type of stuff, to be Mr. Popular, Mr. This and my Mr. Popularity was costing lives. And then I remember I, when when I when the guys came back in the house looking for me, I ran in the back of the house, hiding behind the house, and I said something. God, if you get me out of this, did anybody ever say that before? <laughs> if you get me out of this, yours could have been you were driving to somebody's house you shouldn't have been driving to, and something happened, and you said, God, if you get me out of this. It happens to all of us. And so and behind that house, I said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll go to church. So I did go to church, but I didn't. I still was playing around a little bit. And God met me again. Isn't that funny? Because uh, when he want to sanctify you, he ain't going to leave you alone. <laughs> you don't feel comfortable <laughs> until you say, yes, Lord. So he just kept coming up to me. I'm like, just let me do what I want to do. But he saw this new identity that y'all see today. Isn't that something? I didn't see this person. If you were to ask me to be sitting up here teach, being a teacher in the kingdom of pastor, I would be like, I used to talk about preachers back then. My old identity did not like preachers. So why? So I'm like, I was the one who wanted to kill him. And here I am, one of the ones I wanted to kill. Isn't that something? Kind of like this guy. 
<laughs> it's amazing that, but watch this. So that was when I was 17. But when I said, yes, Lord, there was years that went by. But in those years, he was sanctifying me for his use. And when he was sanctifying me, I started having his desires to want to help his people, which has now led me to what I'm doing today. And that's how the new now I don't want the guy that was in that house on Shuley Street. I don't want to be him no more. So when I see people who remind me of that days, it makes me I don't feel good because I'm like, I don't I'm, I don't want to be that guy. So every one of us is being sanctified. So Paul here, Saul here goes through that. And Ananias, God speaks to Ananias and says, go and lay hands on him. God was ready to revive Saul and open his eyes. But God asked one of his disciples and one of his disciples, Ananias says, but God, I know, I know who Pookie is. Pookie kill people. You want me to go pray for Pookie? <laughs> Pookie will shoot somebody if you just walk up in his house. And you telling me to go over there late is kind of like what y'all may be doing on Saturday. Oh, not, not to scare y'all. I'm sorry. Um, but because uh, <laughs> God Saturday may say lay hands on some pookies. And you may be like, but I remember that person. They last person that touched them, they knocked them out. <laughs> so so Ananias was like, God, listen, this man crazy. And then God says something to Ananias. He says, listen, go because he is a chosen vessel or he is set apart for my use. So the man goes, lay hands on Saul. As soon as he laid hands on Saul, Saul's eyes opened up. And the funny thing about it was God already spoke to Saul that a man was coming to lay hands on him. So God was already preparing the heart of Pookie for the disciple. Just like he's preparing the people who go to be touched by y'all. He's preparing them. He already speaking to them before y'all even see them. Isn't that crazy? So by the time y'all arrive, they were prepared and, 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 and primed to hear what you have to say. That's amazing how God worked. So here he is, finally get to the place where he's, um, God speaks to him about his new identity. If you keep reading, let's go to verse 20. I want to show you this. Same chapter. Verse 20, he says, and it says, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Look at verse 21. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this Pookie <laughs> who was up in Jerusalem killing folk? That's really what he, they, they say in verse 21. <laughs> and verse 22 says, and Saul increased the more in strength and, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. So, the thing that really made Paul walk into his new identity was having an encounter with God. Mm, mm -mm. I'm going to tell y'all what is the problem today. And I know many of you guys are watching this. You, 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 you probably know this as well. The problem we're having today with the people God is trying to sanctify is they, they never really had a true encounter with Jesus. They've heard about him, but they never had a real encounter. I'm talking about the kind of where nobody got to tell you that he, he real. That'll shake your faith to the point where, you know, nobody else got this man was so nobody had to tell him Jesus was real after that experience. And that is the problem. So that's why people will depart from faith, because they never really saw the one we supposed to have our faith in. Does that make sense? They heard about him. And I used to hear about Jesus so much. I used to hear about God. I used to hear about uh, the, the Gospels and, and the, you know, the, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I used to hear about all that, and I didn't understand none of it. I heard about it. Then I'm walking, but I'm still being defeated. And I'm like, well, how is this that I'm, I'm supposed to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but I'm living like the devil? Maybe it's because all I identify with is Pookie because that's the only identity I believe. I don't believe this identity yet. That's why I'm not living like it. Does that make sense? So it still goes back to faith and belief. Paul was pretty much, Paul, Paul believed what he saw so much that Paul was like, listen, I'm going back to the, the same synagogues that I was killing folk. I'm going back and I'm going to start preaching about what I know. He was so convicted. It was to the point that he scared the disciples. When Peter and them heard about this man, they was like, uh, don't bring him here. He he he. It, it was so bad, Peter, that when when the man came around, 
we can run apostles. You know, they were all trying to greet them, but I think I can imagine, uh, Jeremy, they all had like their little pocket knives in their back pocket because they're like, he could be acting like he, he really one of Jesus' disciples until he get close to us, you know, because they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe the transformation. They couldn't believe this new identity. So watch this. There's going to be some people who's going to see Jeremy and be like, nah, you still the, you still the guy I remember back in the day. And Jeremy's like, no, I'm not that guy no more. They ain't going to believe it, even though he's telling them. They're going to be like, no, you still him. You still him. You still, and Jeremy will be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And in their brain, they're like, because Jeremy has been sanctified. He's now accepted the new identity he's, he has to the point that he can't even connect with what people are saying that he used to be. So now watch this. So now we move on in, in, in the story. And you start to see now that throughout the Bible, once you start leaving the book of Acts, you won't hear the name Saul that much. Have any of y'all noticed that? You start hearing things like I, the apostle Paul. Why wouldn't he say I, the apostle Saul? Oh, a changed man. So he didn't put his new sanctified title with his old identity name. <laughs> He's like, listen, don't call me Saul no more. Saul used to kill folk. Paul is preaching for Jesus. And I promise every last one of y'all to hear. Now, I, I, I use Paul just to bring us. Now, now let's go. And then I'm, I'm going to bring it, bring everything in in the last uh, seven minutes. Watch this. Go to Philippians chapter three. Let me let me show you this. Because listen to the same man who we just saw that's been sanctified. Now, a lot of people don't notice. Um, just to give you a little history, I used to believe that Paul got saved. Uh, you know, you know, Paul got converted, and then the next day he was doing all this stuff that we saw. But the scripture, if you really start studying, if you start going in, in history, it, it was about fourteen years before Paul really started getting active. All right. There was a space. It wasn't just like he this conversion happened. Now, what we saw in Acts where it says and he straightway went into the synagogues that did happen immediately. But then there was a period where if you read in Galatians chapter one, there's a period where Paul was away for three years alone with the Lord speaking to him before he came out to meet the other apostles. Isn't that crazy? So it wasn't, th so this transformed man we see today wasn't a man who, it happened like this, boop, boop. He had his sanctification process too, where God had to pour into him and really change his DNA, all those desires and things that he had. So now Paul starts saying things like, um, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Paul starts coming out with this new rep, with this powerful revelation because he spent time in his sanctification process, understanding the fight between the Saul and the Paul. And that's what all of us is going through. Two weeks, you feel strong in the spirit. And then you get one week where that, that flesh just seems like it's whipping you in every area. <laughs> you can't say no to a cookie that week. One cookie got you defeated. <laughs> everything, you fall for everything. You don't have, you, have, you actually have no, uh, no self-control that week. But then the next week, all of a sudden, in the next week, you got strength. So that's really where it seemed like when the sanctification process happened, it's like you start to understand, wait, that old nature, he'll pop his head up, but I need to keep in this new identity. So look at um, um, Philippians chapter three real quick. Let me just show you this. It says in verse, I want to read verse four. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he have whereof, he might trust in his flesh, I the more. Now verse from verse five, all down to verse uh, eight to verse seven. He starts talking, I'm sorry, to verse six. He starts talking about all the things that he did. But look at what he says um, in verse eight. Yea, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. So he says, I've suffered the loss of all the stuff that I achieved in my old identity that I may win the one who gave me my new identity. Everybody see that? Now watch this. Then he says in verse 9, and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, which he used, his old identity was committed to. He says, but that which is through faith 
of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. This man is saying all this stuff, all the degrees I got, all of the stuff that I study in my old identity mean nothing. The moment I knew my new identity, I don't even care about my degree. You know how many people I know that went to law school and then God called them to be preachers? Have, have, have you guys ever seen? <laughs> I can tell you three who who literally spent all because they were in their in their old identity. They said, I'm going to be a lawyer. I know it. I know I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be the best lawyer. And then as soon as they get their papers, God says, <clears throat> I'm, I've called you for my glory. You're not going to need that certificate. Um, some of the information you learned at college, we can use that over here, but you're not going to really need that. And then they come over here and now they have to do something they never went to school for. Isn't that something? Now they're dependent because, okay, Lord, I, I don't know what I'm doing over here. You put me in a courtroom. God, I can stand. God said, that's your problem. That's all pride over there. Over here is all humility. <laughs> You need me to do this thing. You need me to be Paul. You can't, you, Saul, you can do it all by yourself because you've done it. But to be Paul, I promise you, you try to, you try to be Paul apart from prayer. You try to be Paul apart from gathering with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You try to be Paul apart from fasting. You try to be Paul apart from the word of God. I promise you, you will fall flat on your face as Paul. Because you need all those things to have this new identity. Lord have mercy. I'm feeling God's anointing. Because I'm, I'm looking at complete new folks up here. From when I first met all y'all to the, the way I see it now, I'm, I'm speechless. Listen, let me tell y'all on this camera. I'm looking at some people <laughs> from, I'm shocked at, sometimes I'm, I have to double take how amazing what God is doing. Cause they are, they are, amazing and I'm seeing what God is doing through you and it's so mind-blowing because I'm seeing the sanctification right before my eyes you're not the other person no more God has already switched and switched your name and every now and then those old uh, things like we talked about in the last series about sexual desires those old things will pop up from your last country they'll pop up because remember you spent 30 years there you have more time there so but now you're over here learning this new language Trust me, you keep trying to, you know, speak in this new language. I know the, you know, uh, I'm doing this thing now because I'm, you know, trying to practice my Spanish a little bit. Help me, Jesus. Uh, so when I take Dara up the stairs, my daughter, I, when I go up the stairs, I say uno, one, <laughs> two, dos, <laughs> Three quattro. And she be now Dara looking at me like, what is you talking about? I'm doing that from my memory because I got to learn this new language. But you see, but that's called intentionality to learn the new language. I can't just be in the new language talking about make me speak Spanish and I never practice. And that's the problem. We don't practice the kingdom. Lord have mercy. We just sit back. I'm in the kingdom and there's no practice. We don't speak like he speak. We don't know even what his mind is about because we never read. I'm not, and I'm not talking about us. I'm just saying that that's why people get over in their new identity and don't know what they're doing because they don't even know what this new identity is supposed to be going on over here. So Saul, Paul pretty much got to the place where he was like, listen, now I'm so far into this new identity. All that other stuff, all that education, all the popularity, all the music awards, all the bit of all the parties I threw, all the people who rooted my name, all the trophies I won playing football, basketball don't mean absolutely nothing because I found my new identity. That's how you know that your new identity, you have been sanctified when you can look at all your accolades from the past and be like, that, that don't even matter to me. I heard somebody say something one time um, that it was a I can't I can't remember which sportsman I heard say this, but this person won some um, championships, but they are a believer now. And they somebody did an interview with them about their faith. And they said, you know what? It's nice to have um, I, it was a boxer. I just can't remember which one. It, it, was, it was nice to achieve these things. But he said, at the end of the day, I got Christ. 
He actually said, y'all call me the boxer, but I am the man of God because my identity is the man of God, not the boxer. The boxer gave me these accolades, but with the accolades came drugs and all this stuff. And, and I, I was living in my pookie life here. <laughs> but when I became God's man, I don't even need to throw another punch. And I got peace that passes all understanding. Isn't that something? I can sleep at night. I got angels protecting me. But over here, I need 20 bodyguards. Because <laughs> I'm too anxious and worried. So in this new identity, like I said before, when you come in this new identity, God automatically gives you everything you need to do the new thing. You get it on day one. You y'all do know y'all all got assigned angels to y'all? Your own personal angel you got right now standing over your shoulder, sitting there making sure that you are good. Somebody tell me why is that angel there with you? Yeah, because we don't see what's going on in the spirit realm. The devil hate you. He hate me because we are in our new identity and we, the new identity always affects his kingdom. So the devil's like, let's kill Marie. Let's kill Reese. Let's kill uh, 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 Jeremy. Let's kill Jerome. Let, let's kill them because them doing what they're doing now is affecting us. I want this world to be evil, but it can't be that evil why they still here. So he's constantly got stuff pointing at you. How can I mess her life up? How can I get to him? How can I get to that relationship? How can I get to that? And God says, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, wait, wait. Because they are now walking in their new identity. Um, angels, could y'all protect Mr. So-and-so so they can do what they were called to do without any distractions? Wouldn't that be something if president, if our president, can y'all imagine, or he's already dealing with a lot of responsibilities he got to do for our country. Can you imagine if every day the man got to get up, check his own car for bombs, check the whole the White House by him for his own safety? He would never do no work because he'd be so busy looking around for all the snipers that's trying to kill him. So they assign people to take that pressure off him so he can do the work. Does that make sense? God don't want you focusing on the demons. <laughs> He's like, listen, you focus on my agenda. I've given you power of all that. Just focus on my agenda. You find that God will give you, and if that one angel ain't enough, don't worry, God, there, some more can come and help because your assignment is that important. So that new identity to me is truth. That is the thing we got to get to. If we can get to that new identity, y'all, there's going to be provisions. You will get to that new identity. Your house is already paid for in that new spot. The car is already yours here because you need that car to do that work. This may be too. You need that income because of this assignment. God blessed me with what I had because he saw she's part of the assignment. So it was he blessed me because of what was coming. I didn't need a, a big house by myself. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy. What am I doing with a big house by myself? So he said, it ain't you I'm giving you this, this house for. It's the assignment and the people who's coming connected to you. So your blessing is all about new identity. So I tell people, don't, don't seek the blessing. Just seek the new identity. Because <laughs> if you get that, you immediately get the provisions. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to slow down because I'm feeling God's presence, man. Because I sense a shift in our brains. I sense it and I feel it. As I be, as I be talking, I can, sometimes I can feel the difference. I can feel the, 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 the mind shifting. I can feel the, the new person birthing out. I can feel it and it feels so good because we need that new identity because in your new identity is something I need. You got something in your new identity that all of us in this place need. And if you don't find it, we suffer. Isn't that something? I'll end with this. There is an amazing story in the Bible of a young lady by the name of Hadassah. Anybody know who Hadassah is? 
Hadassah. Okay. Her name was Hadassah. And she was just a beautiful young lady from God's chosen people. Nobody knew her. And the king is looking for a new wife. And the king finds favor with Hadassah. And Hadassah, after she gets chosen for her new assignment, her name goes from Hadassah to Esther. <laughs> now, when Esther becomes queen, somebody tell me, did Esther have to, do she, did she have to pray for a house? Did she have to pray for nice clothes? Did she even have to pray for God to give her a, a man who is powerful and, 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 and a good leader? Did she have to pray for that? Did she even have to pray for food? On day one, she got all of it. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is the power of new identity. But the, our problem is we want to stay Hadassah. And Hadassah was not a bad, I mean, she was a woman of God in, in her old identity, but it's just a name change I want you to see that when she became in her new identity that came with her new assignment, all the provisions for that new assignment was there on day one when she arrived. And I need you to get that because I'm telling you as a living witness, the moment I started walking into this new identity, there were things that was given to me from heaven. It wasn't nothing I had to pray for. It was like here because of this. <laughs> but over here, I was praying and fasting and spitting and laying hands on people's cars. I wasn't mine. <laughs> Jeremy rubbing tires. I'm like, it's mine. And I claim it in Jesus' name. And people coming out talking, what you doing rubbing your hands on my car? I'm kidding. But <laughs> while kicking people door down, this is the law said, this is my house. They're like, okay. <laughs> you got three you got three seconds to get out of this house or you gonna see the Lord quick <laughs> you know because over here I'm trying to make it happen in my new identity I don't have to make nothing happen it's there when I arrive <laughs> oh my God father help me I feel your presence Jesus because I sense that we are you're gonna see some blessings that is going to blow your mind and that's gonna tell you you arrived that's going to tell you that because so all what so what does God need from all of us? He needs a yes, Lord. He needs a yes, Lord, for this person, not for this person, not the comfortable. This person over here is comfortable. This person over here, our in our old identity, in, in our old identity, we can get comfortable going to church. In our old identity, we can be comfortable going to church. We can be comfortable even sometimes praying. In our old identity, we can be comfortable, um, you know, you know, listening to Christian music over here, but we ain't submitting. Because we can listen, do all that stuff. And Jesus says, um, are you ready to be a queen now, Esther? No, Lord, I ain't ready to be a queen because I'm, I'm over here praying. I don't want to be a queen, Lord. I, I, I like just being here praying in my nice little space where nobody know me. I don't want nobody to know me, Lord. I, I just want to pray over here. God's like, um, I called you to be a queen. You are a queen. But Lord, look in my heart. I talk to you every day. I don't care you talk to me. Talk to me when you get on your throne. Because a lot of us get comfortable being pookie praying. So pookie, stop praying. Come over here and be Esther, uh, Hadassah. Come over here and be Esther. And then you don't even have to get the word out of your mouth. I already answered it. All you got to do over here, Esther, is think something and it's done. Over here, you got servants. Esther goes over here, y'all. Now watch this. Over here, Hadassah, she's over here. Uh, I can imagine she would walk down in the villages over in, in Jerusalem and, and they would be selling all these beautiful spices for perfume and stuff. And I can imagine her, you know, probably being from a low income family, looking at all that perfume saying, wow, I would love to buy me some of that. Uh, you know, what's, somebody named me some of these nice uh, Chanel number five. Hey, Shabba. <laughs> Chanel number five. She probably saw Chanel number five at the gallery mall. and said, 80 bucks. 90, 100, I can't afford it. 
but I love the way it smelled. One day I'm going to buy me some Chanel number fives. And when she gets selected as Esther, the scripture says they get her ready for the king for six months, bathing her in the finest oils that she did not have to pay for. Isn't that something? <laughs> she had people, she had servants to the point that they were the ones rubbing her back. She didn't have to rub her own back. So in this new identity, God is like, listen, you got employees over here waiting for you to become this owner. <laughs> They're waiting. But over here, you will kill yourself because you, 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 you're still Pookie. Pookie is trying to do it. All. But the more you go over here, oh, I just need you to start the business. Over here, you're not going to actually have to do it. You're going to have employees doing it. I need you to keep the spiritual culture up here as the boss. And make sure everything under you knows my kingdom over here. That person, that's you. So he then takes us through the sanctification process. And it's in this process that we get, we we go halfway in and we say, okay, Lord, I, I'm going to be who you told me to be. But it's scary. And God says, I know, come on. But Lord, I don't know business. I never had a business. I know, come on, I'm going to show you. Just, just keep trusting me. Just keep on, keep on walking. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna give. But Lord, I never, I never started a church. I don't know what I'm doing. I know. Just come on. Just come on. I'm gonna keep showing you. But Lord, I never been married before. I don't know how. I'm not gonna make it. I, 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 I just come on. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna teach you my ways as you do. Lord, I never did this. I never spoke in front of people. Just, just come on. I'm, I'm. A, and then the moment you arrive here, you will start talking like Paul in Philippians chapter three. I'll give everything up for Christ because of what, what he did in my life. Y'all go ahead and kill me. That's what Paul was pretty much saying. Paul was, Paul was shipwrecked, beaten, thrown in prison. Paul was like, um, for me to live is Christ and to die is my gain. He said, this new identity is so good that, hey, you are helping me when you kill me. I really want to be with him <laughs> but if you don't kill me I'm gonna mess your kingdom up Satan how do you lose that's why he's trying to sanctify identity let's bow our heads at this time I sense God's presence in here father we thank you so much for your goodness Lord I'm asking you right now that you would completely help us with our new identity God we're tired of trying to be the old person that we used to be you're trying to change our heart you're trying to create in us a clean heart god so we can be this vessel of honor that you see this vessel of honor that you have chosen father even to this day god i'm, I'm still shocked and blown away that you would take a young man like me and change my life completely around God, I know if you can do it for me, you could do it for anybody in this room and anybody who's watching. So God, I thank you, God, for showing me how identity is so important. For our identity is in you, Lord God. We are tired of putting our identity in our families, our in friends and people and things. And God, it's in you. So today we take all of our expectations that we have placed on other things to give us our identity and to validate us. And we're going to put it on you tonight. We love you and we praise you for what you're going to do in Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you are watching this and if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, we just want to invite you to accept them. One day soon, we are all going to leave this earth and we're going to spend in, in, in eternity, either in heaven or in hell. Those who want to spend an eternity in heaven, we have to go through the door and the door is Christ Jesus. So if you want to make sure that your ticket to eternity is secure, I'm just going to ask that you repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I thank you so much for speaking to me today. God, today I confess my sins before you. I ask right now, God, that you would change me, create in me a new heart. Lord, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. And thank you so much for being my amazing savior. So today I offer my life to you 
and thank you for accepting me into your kingdom in jesus name we pray amen if that is you if you repeated that prayer the angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are rejoicing here at fuel station church and we'll look forward to seeing you uh, next week as god is sanctifying all of us in his kingdom for his glory in jesus name let's give god another hand praise everyone